Hey guys, Brian with Pentec. Today we're going to take a look at the Roland TD4 module. It is the newest module to come out of the Roland factory. The TD4 is very similar in setup to the TD9. Once you set the basic trigger types with the Pentec pads, then generally it's going to function just fine. I haven't found that there's much I had to adjust as far as sensitivity or threshold or anything like that. It's it's pretty much plug and play. A few things to point out about the TD4. Um, like the TD9, it has that pre-wired uh, cable snake type thing. Uh, to me, that's a drawback because if one cable goes out, um, you know, you're pretty much stuck with having to replace the whole thing. Uh, the TD9 actually had an extra input. You're not going to find that on the TD4. The only inputs you have are for the cables that are already pre-wired. The, uh, the module set up for basic five-piece kit with the uh, hi-hat, ride, and it actually has two crash symbols. Um, now, the second crash cable can be used as a crash, you can use it as an additional drum, or you can use it for a dual zone ride symbol to have both the bell and the bow side of the symbol. Um, with this module, the, the ride setup is actually set up so that it is velocity sensitive. When it ships with Roland's kit, it comes with the uh, CY8 symbol, which doesn't have a bell trigger. So what you're going to find with the Pentec kit, if you're using like the E-Jam and it has the bell and the bow, then you're going to find that uh, the bell's not going to function like you would with, uh, say, a TD6 or a TD8. You know, you're going to get a little bit, but you're going to find when you strike the symbol itself, the harder you strike that symbol, then it starts producing the bell sound on its own. So technically, you can use a single zone symbol for your ride symbol and still get both functions of the bell and the bow of the symbol. So let's go ahead and take a look at those settings and get you guys going with your module setup. To get to that area, we're going to press the menu button. I'm going to go to select down to number eight, which is pad settings. And I'm going to hit OK. And then it's going to tell me my trigger type. Um, I'm using a 12 inch snare drum, so you'll see that it's set up for the PD-125. I do get the, both the head and the rim with that setting. If you're using the 10 inch, which comes standard on the E-Jam or the E-Gig, you're going to want to use trigger type PD-105. Now, like I said in the video, once I selected the trigger types, I found that I did not have to adjust sensitivity or threshold or anything. But if you're having problems with the drum is too hot, you're going to go to select down. The next setting is sensitivity. And that's where you'll make your adjustments there. Often people find that Pentex heads are a lot more hot than the Roland heads, so you may have to turn down the sensitivity. Okay, we just arrow down to the advanced settings. I'm going to hit OK. That's where you're going to find your threshold setting. This is also where you're going to find your crosstalk cancel. Often that's uh, you know, used with your toms because they tend to trigger each other through vibration, through your drum rack, etc. Okay, so I'm going to hit menu. It's going to take us back. I'm going to press menu once again. I'm going to go down to number 8 to the pad settings and hit OK. And next I'm going to strike one of my toms. It's a 10-inch drum. Okay, you'll notice it's trigger type PD-105. A 12-inch tom. It's PD-125. Okay, now our kick drum is set up for an 8-inch Trigger type is going to be KD85, and it's going to be the same thing if you're having problems with uh, 
double triggering, etc. You're going to go down to those advanced settings, and that's where you'll find examples such as your mask time, which is often used for double triggering on the bass drum. That's where you'll get into those areas, and you can turn that up if you're having some problems with double triggering. Okay, for my hi-hats, I'm using trigger type VH11. Uh, if you have an E-Gig or an E-Jam kit and you're planning on using this module or the TD9, you're going to need to let Pentec know because there is an adjustment, a modification that has to be done with the E-Gig pedal to make it work with this. You can contact Pentech through email, through their website, pentechworld.com, or you can always give them a call. Okay, next we're going to look at the crash symbol setting. It's just like all the other modules. We usually use the CY12RC to get the, all of the zones, and then our choke. And then for the ride symbol, I use the stock CY8 setting. Um, it seemed to function very well with both the, uh, the bow of the cymbal and the bell sound. And what I found um, with the cymbal, like I said, the bell is a velocity sensitive issue and I found that if I actually strike the edge of the cymbal, that it gives me my bell sound and it's a lot easier to to get that bell to trigger by striking the edge than it is trying to you know really get into that symbol as far as using uh, the bow of it to get the bell sound so that pretty much sums it up for the settings on the td4 like i said it's it's really simple once you select those trigger types then you're pretty much good to go um, you know, just to reiterate a couple of key things you need to know about this module. Um, as far as the hi-hat controller, if you're using the uh, controller that comes with the E-Gig or the E-Jam, um, you're going to have to have Pentec modify that to work with the TD4 or even the TD9 um, because it actually has a uh, mono cable for the input and the hi-hat pedal that you have, if you're using that pedal, is set up for a stereo cable. Another thing to remember is that on the ride cymbal, it is set up so that you're not going to get the, the bell sound out of a standard dual zone. You will get your bell sound, but you're gonna get it on the, on the bow of the cymbal. Um, also, just another thing that I, I don't think I mentioned um, one aspect that I don't like, um, I don't like the, uh, the snake cable system that they have where everything's pre-wired together. Um, because if one cable goes out, really, I mean, you're kind of stuck with having to buy the whole thing. But another thing that I found that I didn't like in particular with this one is that the cables are very short. I'm using a larger kit. My kit is a six-piece kit. I use four toms, two tens, and two twelves. And because the cables are so short, I actually had to put the module dead center in my kit, and they're split up so that half of the cables go towards the right side and half go to the left. Um, so that was kind of a drawback because I couldn't mount the module where I normally put my drum modules because the cable simply wouldn't reach. So that is something to keep in mind. If you've got a larger kit, um, you're going to have difficulty getting these cables to, to reach all the way around both sides. If you guys have any questions, something that's not been covered by this video, please join us online on the Pentec Forum. You can get to it through Pentec's website, pentecworld.com. Until then, take care. Keep drumming.